This video is a solution to free response question number one from the 2005 AP Physics C Mechanics exam. A ball of mass M is thrown vertically upward with an initial speed of V0. It experiences a force of A resistance given by F equals minus K times V, where K is a positive constant. The positive direction for all vector quantities is upward. Express all algebraic answers in terms of m, k, v0, and fundamental constants. The first question says, does the magnitude of the acceleration of the ball increase, decrease, or remain the same as the ball moves upward? And for this, I think I'd like to stop for a moment and just draw a picture of the ball as it's moving upward and then a picture of the ball uh, after it, it stops and is now moving downward. And so for the first case, uh, the ball is moving upward. And while it's moving upward, uh, let's say the ball is here, there are two forces, the gravitational force mg and the force of air resistance, which is k times v. And those are the only two forces that act on the ball. That force of air resistance opposes the motion of the ball as it's traveling upwards. And so here, the velocity of the ball is upwards. And as they state in the problem, the positive direction for all vectors is pointing upwards. Then at some time later, the ball is moving downward. And so here's a picture of the ball again. Um, now the ball is moving down, which means that the force of air resistance, which still opposes the motion of that object, would be pointing up. It's equal to k times v, and the gravitational force points down, mg. And in this case, um, the velocity of the ball is down. But still, the positive direction uh, for all vectors is pointed up. And so... The question says, does the magnitude of the acceleration of the ball increase, decrease, or remain the same as the ball moves upwards? And so uh, looking up at the picture, I see that, that as the ball goes upwards, the velocity is decreasing. And so um, as the position of the ball is increasing, the velocity of the ball is decreasing because the, the net force is in the downward direction. So the ball is thrown up with some initial speed v0, and as its position increases and it's moving upwards, uh, the velocity will be decreasing. As the velocity decreases, that means the force of air resistance, k times v, will decrease. And so although mg is not changing, if k times v is decreasing due to the velocity decreasing, that means the net force on the ball will be decreasing. And if the net force on the ball is decreasing, that requires that the acceleration decrease as well. And so for question A, uh, my answer is that the acceleration of the ball will decrease as the ball moves upwards. And so that question says to justify our answer, and I think that as long as in words um, we describe some of what I talked about here on the left, then you should get that answer correct. You need to relate the net force acting on the ball to the acceleration of the ball uh, and explain what's happening with the force of air resistance as the ball moves upward. Question B says to write but not solve a differential equation for the instantaneous speed v of the ball in terms of the time t as the ball moves upwards. I know that um, the net force acting on the ball is equal to its mass times its acceleration. And as it's moving upwards, there are two forces that are both pointing downward. And so both of those forces <clears throat> should be written as negative. So minus mg minus kv equals the mass of the ball times its acceleration. Lastly, the acceleration of the ball uh, can be written as dv dt. So I will write on the right-hand side of the equation mass times dv dt. 
And that's my final answer for uh, part B. We do not need to solve that differential equation. We just simply need to write it. And there it is. I think an important thing there is you just need to realize that that differential equation could be solved um, for the uh, a velocity time equation for this ball by separating the variables and integrating both sides. Part C says to determine the terminal speed of the ball as it moves downward. And so when the ball is moving downward, I'm going to write a, a new equation, f equals ma equation, uh, for when the ball is moving downward and for when the speed of the ball, v, is equal to its terminal velocity. And I know that when the ball is at its terminal velocity, the acceleration is equal to zero. And so when I write f equals ma, in this equation, um, mg is still negative, it still points downwards, but kv is positive because it points upwards while the ball is moving down. And they want me to solve for the terminal speed, so I'm going to uh, write a new symbol, uh, vt, which stands for terminal speed. And when the ball reaches its terminal velocity, the acceleration will be zero. So I set the, the net force equal to zero, and then I just need to solve for vt. And so vt equals m times g divided by k. Part D says, does it take longer for the ball to rise to its maximum height or to fall from its maximum height back to the height from which it was thrown? And so the ball starts here. It's thrown up with an initial speed v naught. It goes up, comes back down. And so its velocity would be directed downward. They're asking us to compare the time going up to the time going down, t up to t down. And one of them has to be bigger than the other because they don't even give us the option to say that they're equal. And so how does t up compare to t down? Uh, I think that using conservation of energy, we can explain that the time on the way down is longer than the time on the way up. And if the time on the way down is longer than on the time than the time on the way up, then that means it takes longer to fall. So my answer here is that it takes longer to fall. Why is this? As the ball is moving up, and even as the ball is moving moving down, that entire time it's losing some mechanical energy because it's being acted on uh, by air resistance. And so there's the force uh, minus k times v, which is acting on it throughout its entire trajectory, which is removing some of its mechanical energy. And so the most amount of energy that it has is really the very instant that it's thrown. And so on the way down, it has less energy than what it had uh, when it was on its way up. And so because the, the total amount of energy that that ball has is decreasing at all moments in time, it will it's a requirement that it take more time for it to travel down because it doesn't have as much energy to come down as it did to go up. And lastly, part E says, on the axes below, sketch a graph of velocity versus time for the upward and downward components of the ball's flight, where TF is the time at which the ball returns to the height from which it was thrown. And so uh, in the graph, the initial position at t equals zero should be uh, the moment where it's thrown, and then tf is where it returns to that original height, which is kind of what I've drawn in the picture on the left. And so if all vectors in this problem are positive uh, pointing up, that means my graph should start uh, with some positive uh, vo initial velocity v naught. So I'm just going to label uh, this to be the initial velocity v naught with uh, t equals zero. And that's that should be my first point on the graph. The next thing I want to do is I want to figure out when will the velocity of the ball be zero? When, when should my graph cross the time axis? And in part D we said that because the ball is losing um, some of its mechanical energy, the time on the way up is smaller than the time on the way down. And so um, if the total time to go up and then down is Tf, and this time right here in the middle is that total time divided by 2, then we should reach the maximum height 
before we get to half of that time. And so somewhere, um, I, I don't know where exactly, but somewhere before there, we should have uh, the velocity be equal to zero. And once again, that's because uh, I know that more than half of the time needs to elapse after it stops at its maximum height, after it gets to its highest position, which is where the velocity is equal to zero. Lastly, I know that um, by the time the uh, ball has reached that initial position again, it should be approaching the ball's terminal velocity and that terminal velocity should be less than the initial velocity that the ball had. If we ignored air resistance, when the ball got back to that same position, it would have the same velocity as when it was released. But because of the air resistance, uh, some of the energy is removed, and so that speed should be less. And so I'm going to say that the terminal velocity of the ball, Vt, is some velocity, uh, the magnitude of which is less than its initial velocity. So I'm not making the terminal velocity as negative as its initial velocity was positive. And so uh, I've labeled the terminal velocity there, and I know that by the time we get to the final time here, we should be approaching that terminal velocity. And then lastly, I know that um, the line that connects these points should be exponentially decreasing because uh, I know that the, the, the air resistance force that is acting on this ball um, would cause the form of the velocity time equation to look something like proportional to e to the minus t. And for that reason, uh, I should expect that, that the line be exponentially decreasing. And so we have a graph that starts at t equals 0 at a positive velocity v0 and at tf ends at a negative velocity uh, vt, the terminal velocity. It crosses uh, the time axis, which means it has zero velocity at a time that is less than half the time taken to go up and then come back down. And the points are connected by an exponentially decreasing line. I think uh, if you, as long as you have those points, um, then you should be able to get all the points for the graph.